Thank you, Mr Speaker. A question for the Minister of Health. How does the Government ensure that all taxpayer funding for aged care is spent on the provision of care for subsidised residents and not for other purposes? The Hon. Tony Wright. Mr Speaker, in the last two years the Government has put an extra $88 million into improving the quality of nursing supervision in rest homes and to increase the aged care subsidies. Government funding for aged care is delivered by contracting rest homes and others to provide this care, the detail of which are specified in their contracts. District health boards audit the rest homes and others to ensure that they are providing appropriate care. Sir Kitchener. In the absence of any financial monitoring as to how the 800 odd million taxpayer funding in aged care is spent, how can the government be sure that funding that is intended to be spent on the provision of care for residents is not siphoned off by some providers into profits for shareholders? The Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, District Health Boards and the Ministry audit rest homes and others to ensure that they are providing appropriate care as per their contracts. Sue is he concerned that, according to the nurses' organisation, many aged care providers do not pass on funding they receive for wage increases to staff working in the sector, but instead use that funding to fund capital development projects such as building new facilities and increases in shareholder payouts and bottom line profits? If not, why not? Well, Tony uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I'm not concerned if age residential care providers are also investing in providing more age residential care beds. Uh, a major review released by the Government has indicated there will be a significant need for investment in this sector over the next few years if we are to keep up with our ageing population. Sue Kedgley. Will he agree to initiate an inquiry into how taxpayer funding in aged care is spent? just as he initiated an inquiry into the primary health organisations to ensure that taxpayer dollars get to patients and frontline staff, as he said at the time, and if not, why not? The Honourable Tony uh, Ryle. Ministry of Health and District Health Boards are regularly auditing rest homes and others to ensure that they are providing appropriate care against their contracts. I agree with the Auditor-General, who released a report last year which says the monitoring of rest homes under the previous Labour Green government was appalling. Point, point, of, order. point of order, Sue Kedgley. Um, we would have wished order. that there was a Labour Green government, but there wasn't a Labour Green government, and I would appreciate our accuracy in his answers. Order. The member has supplementary questions to challenge a minister's answer, but can't, by way of point of order, challenge the accuracy of a minister's answer. Sue Kedgley, supplementary question. Can he confirm that there is no financial monitoring as to how taxpayer funding in aged care is spent? And why, when the aged care sector receives around $820 million of taxpayer money, is the government, a government that campaigned on being accountable to the taxpayer, not willing to investigate and track where money goes to in the aged care sector? Honourable Tony Ryan. Uh, Mr Speaker, the District Health Boards and the Ministry of Health contract rest homes to provide a certain standard of service for our older New Zealanders. It is a priority uh, for taxpayers. They audit the performance of the uh, providers against their contracts, and it's our expectation that those service specifications should be met. Does Sue Kedgley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does it concern him that some of the biggest providers in aged care are earning handsome returns of 14 to 16 per cent every year and some reported profits of $61 million last year, yet wages for caregivers are amongst the lowest in New Zealand. And if this does concern him, will he begin an investigation into how aged care funding is spent? Honourable Tony Wright. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm unable to confirm the figures that the, minister, that the member has given. Uh, what is important to realise is a number of these providers are also retirement village providers, and often it's the significant profits that might come from the provision of retirement village services that produce the figures that she is in fact seeing. It's quite clear from the Age Residential Care Review that significant investment is still required in this area, and that is certainly a matter that has the government's uh, attention. Question number... I supplementary the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Why did he agree to the plan from Capital and Coast District Health Board to cut home help for a further 
500 older New Zealanders from the 1st of December this year. Donald, Tony uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I suspect the member is referring to an announcement made by the Capital Coast District Health Board that they were going to start means testing the provision of some services, which is the policy of every other district health board, including those when she was an Associate Minister of Health. Supplementary. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Given his recent call for better support for people with Alzheimer's, why did he agree to the closure of the psychogeriatric hospital in Richmond, which caters for the highest need elderly people with serious dementia and mental illness? The Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, the reason why the District Health Board is considering that is because they have clinical advice which says care could be provided in much better settings than currently at that service. Uh, the Government is more interested in providing quality services than that member. Question number 11, Tim McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. 